camera off. I did a little bit of rewiring to kind of move the cables out of the way. One of the things that's nice to do is try to clean up your cables so you don't have them laying all over the place and out, you don't want you want them hidden as much as possible. And this thermal take case has some nice grommets where you can uh, and has some area behind the motherboard so you can hide some of the cables behind the motherboard. I'll show you how it looks in the back. Right now I have several things coming out of the top. This is the SATA power connector for the water cooling, the Corsair. Uh, these are the fan controllers. This is the USB cable I ha have coming from the USB header on the motherboard through the top directly to the CPU. CPU. This is the back plate for the CPU. And I've routed the cables up here through the back as I mentioned and round here's the USB going to the header. When you're planning your build, the airflow is pretty important. Right now, I have these sucking air from the inside of the case and blowing it out. Hopefully, if everything works right. Uh, I want air, fresh air coming in that's cool, that's room temperature, so I have the coolest air going in to these fans that I can. There's going to be some heat from the, uh, the RAM chips. The memory chips go right here and they'll generate some heat. Uh, chipset here, the Z77 chipset will generate some heat too and this chipset so there will be some general heat generated in this area there'll be the hard drives will be generating heat right now I have the fan blowing inside the case I might turn that around and and suck the heat out rather than blowing it in I haven't decided that yet for this fan I did turn it around actually I had a black fan here but I turned this around so instead of sucking hot air out it's blowing cold air in the idea is to bring the cold air right in on these fans so it's got the coldest air possible coming out of the room straight into these fans. Also on the side panel I have ordered another 200 millimeter fan and that fan should go right here and I'm going to have it sucking outside air directly in to the motherboard so I have cold air coming in here, cold air coming in here exhausting here possibly exhausting here too and I even have room for another fan down here so it's always important when you plan your computer build to kind of think through that especially if you're going to do overclocking if you're not going to do overclocking it's not going to be as important but I am definitely planning to overclock my CPU so I want it cool as possible in here and my memory Okay, I'm back. I'm going to start working on installing the hard drives and get the cabling done for that. And then I'll move on to the other things on the front panel. Uh, I have two kinds of hard drives. I have a regular hard drive. Uh, this is a 3 terabyte drive. I have two of them. They're Seagate Barracuda drives. I'm going to use these for storage. I do photography and I generate a lot of uh, large files because I collect raw files, which are very large, uh, somewhere around... 25 megabytes per picture and I have hundreds of thousands of pictures and I plan to get a camera with even higher megapixels. This kind of drive has uh, coated platters, magnetic platters with a little head that reads on it and uh, so these are subject to if you jar them, drop them or move them they, the head can dig into the platter and ruin your data. So this is the traditional drive that we've had. They've gotten bigger and bigger. They're good for storage. I also have a new type of drive, a solid state drive. This is a SANS disk, uh, 256 gigabytes. Not nearly as big. Costs more money than, than each one of these. Uh, but it's supposed to be super fast. There are no moving parts. And so it's supposed to last for a long time. This has 2 million hours a uh, time between failures and it should really reduce the time to boot up uh, into Windows and I'm really looking forward to this I'm going to put I have two of these then I'm going to run in a RAID 0 for booting up so it'll be a total of 500 gigabytes and then I'm going to have these two as my D drive I'm going to have them mirrored because I don't want to lose my pictures so I'm going to have it in RAID 1 which is a mirroring. So one of these drives will be an exact duplicate of the other one in case I have some sort of failure happen to this. Now RAID 0 is a little more risky because if something happens to any either one of the drives 
you've lost your your complete system for that drive because they operate as one drive one half of each of of the same drive so if either half goes then the whole drive is dead and you've lost all that data this is for my pictures which are more important to me I can reinstall the software but the pictures I lose those I may not have another copy so I'm right now I'm going with a mirrored and this is what they call striping uh, which is RAID 0 RAID 0 striping RAID 1 mirroring and then also I'm going to be installing the DVD drive okay for the hard drives these slots here for the hard drives and I'm gonna put these in order not just randomly I'm gonna have I'm looking at the cooling and it looks like these four are right in front of the fan so I'm gonna put the two hottest ones on bottom and that's the, the Seagate drives and then I'm gonna put the solid state drives above them and the order according to this motherboard the best boot are uh, position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 0 and 1 are uh, SATA 3, which is 6 gigabytes per second, as opposed to SATA 2, which is what the other four are, which is 3 gigabytes per second. So the reason I bought these drives is for the fast boot up time. So, of course, I'm going to put these two on 0 and 1 so they can boot up as fast as possible using the SATA 3. And the way these work, they're plastic little drive bays. You push this button open it and it slides out. Okay, apparently for this uh, particular case it uses these locking clips to hold in your hard drive. So you just make sure your hard drive is, has the uh, power and SATA connectors facing the rear. Line it up with the holes and then these clips go right in to hold it in. So you don't have to screw your hard drive in like you used to and that should hold it securely and then I'll just slide it back in the case and then lock it in and then it's in and ready to go do the same thing for this uh, so we'll have 0 1 2 and 3 is the plan that I have for these right now just snap right in okay you want to make sure they're in there nice and snug <clears throat> slide it into the position you want it and snap it in just like that now this has a back plane similar to the uh, regular hard drive you know it has your SATA power supply and your SATA connector okay I uh, got the uh, solid state drive connected by fastening four screws to the bottom of this plastic holder and you can see the connectors are on the edge on the back side because that's where they're all going to be connected and I'll just slide it in like this I'll do the same thing for my last drive okay you can see I now have the screws in this, my last drive this is going to be my drive zero for the SATA and it is now locked in. I've removed the uh, covers for the five and a half inch drive bays or five and a quarter inch drive bays. You're probably not old enough to know what five and a quarter inch means but those were the floppy drives that were five and a quarter inch in diameter and so they that's what they call these larger bays. The smaller bays for, or for the hard drives but here we have the DVD CD CD ROM uh, player and it's very simple installation it this one is a SATA it requires a SATA power connector and a SATA data cable in the back and there are places for screws here but this particular case is thermal tape case things just snap in so I just slide it in and it snaps right into place there's a little uh, latch over here, if you can see that. The latch here that releases it, so you just push it down and it'll slide right back out. And 
push it in, locks in place, and it's pretty secure. So that's a real nice convenience to not have to screw in all the screws. Now what I've done here, I have this multimedia card with the SATA 3. The case came with a little bracket adapter. These used to be for the three and a half inch floppy drive. Uh, now that's pretty much obsolete. And about the only thing I know of you really use it for are for multimedia or USB additional uh, areas to put in your bay. And this one, now I've screwed it in with the little screws on the side. And make sure it's in the right slot. And they have a special cover to go with it. So it looks nice and neat to match the rest of the uh, case. Okay, what I did since this uh, media uh, reader was sliding, I went ahead and added a screw to the side here to hold that in. So I'm going to push it. Uh, to add a card to it, it's not going to slide into the case. also did one for the DVD drive, even though it probably didn't need it. also just want to show you here is where all your hard drives come out. You can see where all the connect connections are, and this is where we will put the cables for the hard drives. You also have the case cables for all the controls for the case coming out back here too. So it's a little bit of a spaghetti mess, but this will be all hidden behind the panel, so it shouldn't be too distracting and hopefully we can get everything buttoned in nice I'm going to go ahead and install the uh, PCI slot for the USB 3 adapter for one of these plate covers and it slides out like that and go ahead and install this in the first slot Okay, here are the back of the hard drives. There are basically two types of connectors you need. One for power, which is a SATA power connector, and one for data, which is the data SATA con connector. The uh, SATA connectors for data come from the motherboard kit, and the ones for power come from the power supply kit. And these are modular cables for the power supply, so we'll connect them run them through here and then connect it on the other side to the power supply. You can see we have a series of power supply connectors on here. So we'll just start with the top and work our way down. Just slide it in. There goes that one. There goes that one. Finally, there goes that one. Alright, I'll take the other end of the power supply and run it through the bottom. That can be plugged into the power supply unit. The next thing is to connect the data cables. These have little clips on them so that they stay secure. And the issue is here I need to keep track of which ones are which. So I'm going to take these and mark them with a uh, silver marker so that I'll know which cable goes to which one. So I'll know that these two drives are say to zero and are my boot drives and these two are say to one are my storage drives. This will be C, this will be D. Okay, now I've marked my cables. This is one, zero. That's the designation on the motherboard for those SATA cables. So I'm going to put zero at the top, just like that. Okay. So all of these will then be Sent to the motherboard through here. Now I'm going to plug in the power supply to the uh, hard drives, the SATA power supply. And then we have our SATA data cables that need to go in, in these slots right here. The top slot is a zero, the bottom slot is the one. Okay, that's the hard drive, and that should be it for the data. Okay, uh, I'm going to connect these two. Uh, say to hard drive cables one of them goes to the top hard drive port and the other one goes to the eSATA connector uh, I'm not going to be picky about where they go so I'm just going to put them wherever they will fit 